now in general we just uh, have a look at the overall design procedure for a tension mapper uh, so this uh, design procedure uh, we can adopt as per the is codal provisions first step find the required gross area to carry the factored load considering strength in yielding that is ag so this uh, gross area is to be found using what is the design load that is given okay you have to design the member for resisting some load so that load is either given or you have to evaluate okay divided by so tu divided by fp upon gamma mo so here gamma mo is the partial safety factor which we are using as 1.1 it has come to numerator okay this gamma mo is 1.1 it has come to numerator so it becomes 1.1 tu upon fu it means you are increasing the gross area by 10 percent okay tu is factor tensile force either you have to evaluate this or it is usually given in the problem statement okay then select suitable shape of section depending upon the type of structure and location of the member such that gross area is 25 to 40 percent more than ag calculated now why to do this just to ensure the safety okay so that the selected section is able to carry the designated force tu it has to resist a force of tu okay then determine the number of bolts or the welding required so this is design of connections design of connection for tension member either it can be bolted one or welded connection so when you are designing the connection as bolted connection you have to uh, decide the diameter of bolts number of bolts pitch okay and if you are designing the connection as welded connection you have to consider the length of the connection for how much length you are going to weld the member to the the set plate next step is the find uh, finding the strength considering strength in yielding of gross area then strength in rupture of critical section strength in block shear so the equations for all three we saw in the preliminary slides all the equations okay and fifth step the strength obtained should be more than factored section this is a check obviously has to be given whatever the strength we are calculating out of the minimum of three minimum of a b and c this minimum value should be more than factored tension okay and there is one more concept called slenderness ratio so IS 800 2007 also recommends the check for slenderness ratio of tension members as per the table. This is the table given by IS code. So here for different members, different slenderness ratio values have been specified. First category, a tension member in which a reversal of direct stress occurs due to loads other than wind or seismic. For such category of members, 180 is the value of maximum slenderness ratio. Next category, a member normally acting as a tie in a roof truss or a bracing system not considered effective when subject to possible reversal of stress into compression resulting from the action of wind or earthquake forces. It means what? What is reversal of stresses? reversal of stresses means it means the member uh, or the nature of force in the member is actually tensile force or tension force 
However, because of reversal, this nature uh, becomes compressive. This is known as reversal of stresses uh, due to some reasons like wind forces, earthquake forces, and so on. Okay. Uh, so for second category of members, we have 350 as the slenderness ratio. Third category, member always under tension other than pre-tensioned members. For such members, it means there is no reversal, reversal of stresses taking place. Then the slenderness ratio limit is 400. And there is no limit for the last category. What is that? Tension members such as bracings, pretensioned to avoid sag did not satisfy maximum slenderness ratio limit. Friends, this table gives us important, important values of slenderness ratio and these are uh, important values from your MCQ's point of view as well as oral exam point of view. Such questions usually occur in gate examinations, your oral examinations, and maybe they will appear in your NCM examination also.